to you by Nissan Driven. And welcome back inside the Lloyd Noble Center here in Norman, Oklahoma. Dan Schulman and John Sundbold with you for what figures to be a very entertaining basketball game tonight. An outstanding test for the Oklahoma Sooners as they take on the number two team in the nation, the Maryland Terrapins. And I know, John, when we came to shoot around today and you looked at these Terps up close in person for the first time, guys like Holden and Baxter and Wilcox and Randall off the bench, you said, man, these guys are big. A big physical <laughs> team. They will pound the glass. We'll see if Oklahoma can keep this Terrapin team off the board. We are underway, and it'll be Maryland with the first possession. Maryland extremely quick in the backcourt. Good matchup tonight. Steve Blake at the point. The score on the perimeter is number three, Juan Dixon with the ball right now, averaging better than 18 points per game. And Dan, the Sooners will be able in the man-to-man -man defense to switch like size men. Here's Byron to Mouton. Got a size advantage over Qantas White. There's an offensive rebound for Dixon, and the baseline floater won't go. Well, one of the reasons why Juan Dixon is such a terrific scorer, he can get it on his own off the dribble, he can get it off offensive rebounds, and you've got to be careful on the defensive end. He will come up with steals and take it coast to coast. 6'3", only 165 pounds, but there might not be a tougher player <laughs> in the nation. He's 165 or 160. His <laughs> running partner, Steve Blake, at 160. Yep. Speed to burn, though. Juan is white. Yes! <laughs> well, good start for the junior college transfer. A guy who a few years ago in high school played with Hollis Price. Now his backcourt made again at Oklahoma. There's Dixon, another miss. Boy, Taj Holden got crashed, and now he hits the floor. And this is symbolic of the kind of basketball we're going to see tonight. And we have a man down for Maryland. Well, Sooner basketball is all about being tough and, and being physical. And Kelvin Sampson talked about that today. Aaron McGee comes from the weak side to keep the ball alive so that his teammates can help get it. Well, watch the head go down. Ouch. Ooh. See if Taj Holden's okay. Still laying down. Gary Williams out on the floor to make sure his big man is okay. Boy, he hit the floor hard. And we talked about how physical, what a great rebounding team this Maryland squad is. And Oklahoma is going to have to have bodies fly to the basketball, and Aaron McGee did that on that possession. Holden, under his own power, actually jogs off the floor, and there'll be a quick That's substitution. A yeah. Chris Wilcox comes into the game. As you look at what Gary Williams has accomplished for Maryland, took him to the Final Four for the first time ever last year, lost to the National Semis to Duke, actually had to play the Blue Devils four times last season. What a, what a treat. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> but Chris Wilcox is coming to the game now for Holden. What do you like about him? Oh, a terrific, terrific player. A monster game in the Illinois victory. 19. Shot blocker, dunker, can shoot it, can rebound. Yep. What's not to like? 6'10, about 225 off the bench. At times there are questions about decisions he may make on the floor. We'll see if Maryland, as this game progresses, how they will pick up, if they will trap a little full court pressure. Boy, look at Dixon. He'll gamble on we'll every there opportunity. Is. Yep. You've got to be able at times to find his man. Aaron McGee, no, and Alani Baxter brings down the rebound. Dan, any time a defender gambles, a lot of times what you want to do is find his guy. Juan Dixon's going to go for steals. That means his man's going to be open. Averaging about three steals per game. Here's Wilcox going to work with the jump hook. Baxter with the putback and the foul. Now, if you want to describe, Lonnie Baxter just put effort right by his name. He works constantly on both ends of the floor. You're going to see the little jump hook. It is about unstoppable how high Wilcox gets up. And there, Baxter attacking. Baxter is senior, 6'8", 260. Just gets better and better every year. And I don't know that anybody, even those within the Maryland program, thought he would develop into the caliber of player that he's become. Well, a credit to him and a credit to the coaching staff. The hard work they all put in, Lonnie Baxter has made himself a John Wooden candidate yes. this year. You know, from his freshman year on, as you mentioned, who would have thought? And the MVP last year in the West Regional. Aaron McGee strong to the hoop, but no call. And the ball stays with the Sooners. Now, Kelvin Sampson, we talked about Gary Williams and what he's done in Maryland. How about Kelvin Sampson leading Oklahoma to the NCAA tournament in each of his seven seasons here in Norman? They won the big 
12 tournament last year. A difficult chore in Kansas City. They beat Missouri, Kansas, and Texas to win that tournament. Well, we got a full house and a loud house oh, here tonight, fun. huh? Dixon off the screen. Got it. Yeah, you have to stay on Juan Dixon. What makes him so good at 6'3", the explosion. Comes off the screen, looks to shoot. Here's an exciting player for Oklahoma, Abby Ara, who missed badly on that shot. Another junior college player who is scoring better than 15 per game. Again, Dixon gets inside, and he's got such a beautiful mid-range game. Yeah, one bounce. Oklahoma cannot gamble too much on the offensive glass. One or two guys, fine. You send four bodies there, Maryland will make you pay on the other end. McGee's line drive, no good. And look at Baxter just crushing people. And again, three Oklahoma guys are not back defensively. Byron Mouton, little room on the baseline. And he turns it over. This is Hollis Price, leading scorer for the Sooners, and now Oklahoma slows it down. Kelvin Sampson's ball clubs have always been maybe the most efficient clubs I've seen on the offensive end. Now they have new faces, new bodies. They will get better as this year goes on. McGee right around. Wilcox can't get the roll. Well, there are going to be some physical battles inside tonight. And missed opportunities. Great pass. And a foul from behind as Wilcox beat McGee down the floor. You have to love Steve Blake's vision. The junior point guard started from the day he got on campus. His eyes are up, his head is up, right on the money. Makes it easy for a big man to run the floor. They know they'll be rewarded on the other end. Seven assists per game for Blake. Because he doesn't score a lot, sometimes underappreciated on the national level, but his feed got a Wilcox to the line. An unselfish play. A guy that can score, can shoot it. And McGee is going to head out of this game. Already two personal fouls, and Oklahoma needs all the size they could muster against this big Maryland team. Yeah, right away you saw Oklahoma trying to go inside to McGee on the offensive end. Early misses, early foul trouble. And Wilcox with a couple of free throws. That has been a big problem for him so far this year. There's still been token pressure up the floor. Ara with great elevation knocks it down. He loves the big ball games. 29. Against yeah, against Arkansas, 29. Averaging was about 15. Excited in shoot around this afternoon. A travel called on Lonnie Baxter. Ebby Ara came on campus and everybody predicted preseason Big 12 player of the year or newcomer of the year I should say look at this move on the baseline boy he could really move now you have to play within the system on the offensive right. end you cannot keep giving Maryland opportunities to run out like that another terrific pass Steve Blake to Byron Mouton and Maryland up by five then how about Steve Blake's recognition when he has numbers when he doesn't have numbers Maryland will continue to put pressure on this Oklahoma team and we got a foul away from the ball, committed to by Blake. That'll send us to our first timeout of the evening. Maryland, Blake unselfish as always, leading the Sooners by five. ESPN and ESPN2, home of the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship. Hey, what's with the cap? You got a Little League game today or something? Nah, I'm just used to it. You know, a lot of people aren't crazy about their hair. And they got different ways of dealing with it, especially if you got flakes. Here's how I deal with it. I tell them, use this whole new head and shoulders. It goes directly to the scalp to help stop flakes before they even start. So you end up looking like you were born with a great head of hair. Now, who'd want to cover that up? Oh, forgot your hat. No, thanks. New head and shoulder shampoo. Unbeatable daily dandruff protection. Unbelievably beautiful hair.
with John Sunville, and I'm Dan Schulman here in Norman, Maryland. Gary Williams was worried about this. They're coming off exams. They haven't done a whole lot the last 10 days, but they don't look rusty. Uh, they look well tested so yeah, far. Huh? I, you know, the one thing, the key, just watching this Maryland get team early, they can send one of their big bodies to the defensive glass, and they're getting the basketball. They squeeze it, and then they turn, and they go. And Oklahoma sending three or four to the offensive boards will not work. They've got to get back defensively. They have yet to make Maryland set up in their half-court offense and work for a shot. And Maryland at their best when they can get out and get quick, easy buckets, and they've had a couple of those already here tonight. Well, Oklahoma trying to counter, and they do. Jabari Brown from Juarez White. Well, I thought the pass was wide and maybe a little high. Now Brown at 6'10", gone up, and wow! Darian Selby says nothing easy tonight. When you're at home to put a little emotion inside the crowd, the back screen, and you know, Steve Blake played it well. Just can't do anything about that. Terrific, terrific elevation. And Selby coming from the top. Can't really tell Lonnie Baxter it won't there won't be easy layups here. Baxter to the line again. Boy, quite a statement at both ends of the floor. Even though Baxter's shooting free throws, maybe Kelvin Sampson told his team to compete a little harder in that timeout. Well, the game a year ago, the cold field house, when Oklahoma went out, J.R. Raymond was suspended. Slow start. Maryland got off to a big start. Kelvin Sampson's ball club had to scratch and claw to get back in that game, and they did. Maryland winning it. Byron Mouton converts after the free throw miss, and it's now a six-point lead for the Terps. With the ball, Jabari Brown, the guy who dunked it last time down, a transfer from Florida International, just became eligible last week. Yeah, terrific effort. He put it on the floor, likes to take it to the rim. Gary Williams, though, Dan has what he wants. He doesn't want Oklahoma to get out and get easy baskets. They want to make them set up in a half-court set. Wide open on the wing. Mouton for three. And Selby keeps it alive, but a right to Blake. Oh, what a pass. And Baxter with a travel. He didn't think so. We've got a good start here in Norman tonight. Maryland, the number two team in the country, 8-1 on the season, taking on Oklahoma, also 8-1. Dan Schulman and John Sunvold with you here inside the Lloyd Noble Center. And boy, we have seen a couple of alley-oop, one in attempt, one successful, some hard fouls, guys hitting the floor. Looks like we're in for a good one tonight. We're at pressure from Dixon. Yeah, Dixon just outstanding at shooting the gap. He's, he's so quick that he can stay with any of the players he's guarding, and then he shoots the gap, makes a lot of steals. McGee back into the game with two fouls. And the rebound to Baxter. And he's 0 for 3 on that move. He has it. It's right there, point blank. He must convert. Taj Holden is checked back in for Maryland as well. It's a good sign after how hard he hit the floor. Kevin Sampson now changing the defense. The big guy can shoot it from out there, but not this time. Juanis <laughs> White for three. Ebiara elevates, but when Lonnie Baxter gets one of those big paws near the basketball, forget about it. Oh, really? He, he gathers yeah. it in. I thought Ara maybe should have tipped it to a teammate. McGee with a good play on the defensive end. Oklahoma on the run. From the wing, the three is good for Selby. And the first opportunity for Oklahoma to get it out and find an open shooter. Drew Nicholas for three. Just checked in for Maryland, and that quiets the crowd a little bit. And Nicholas, the, the versatile one, comes off the bench, can shoot it, can defend, can play any three spots on the floor. And it's a three-guard look for Maryland right now. Some of the students have gone home for a Christmas vacation already, but it looks like they gave the tickets to their friends because this place is packed. From the corner, a round for three! Big time scorer in junior college. He will love the atmosphere. He makes a couple jump shots. Expect him to attack. Abby Arras, second team, Juco All-American last year. Dixon. And now they'll tie it up on the floor. The arrow will keep it with Maryland. 
And Oklahoma having a tough time defensively matching up against the three guards. There's a knock away. You're going to see Evi elevate and knock it in. Average 25 and a half points a year ago in junior college. Well, not having seen a whole lot of Arav, he could shoot it from oh, out okay. there. And with the bounce he's got in his game, he's going to be a heck of a player in this conference. Well, he had a comfortable 29 against Arkansas. Yeah. He didn't force anything. Yeah. Came within the offense, got some on the break. That's Oklahoma's best win this year. On the road in Fayetteville by 15. What a pass. Wilcox to hold it. A terrific pass. Good catch by Todd. Maryland on top by three, eight minutes into this game. With the ball, Darian Selby. He has been huge off the bench early. Follows his own miss, and then probably is going to get called for the foul. That's about the only thing that he's done wrong since coming into this game. He's a big reason why Oklahoma's within three of Maryland. Tell you more about some of the new facilities for this Sooner Bunch when we come back. Getting the folks at Ask Jeeves to test the Norelco Quadra Action Razor should be easy. Hey, they're smart, right? Will I get a close shave? Signs point to no. This thing's going to chew up my face. But thanks to slots for longer hair and holes for short stubble, they got a close shave without the nicks and cuts of a blade. Well, it's only been a few days, but I'm liking it. They especially loved how easy it was to clean. It needed a quick bath. The Quadra Action has satisfied 99% of the guys who tried it. Except no imitations. Get America's number one selling electric shaver, Norelco. This holiday season, share the gift of Stetson. Introducing the new long-lasting scent of Bob. Bob gets cleaner with new Rainforest Falls Zest. Rainforest Falls Zest. Hello. You just can't find a better clean. Five horsepower Nissan Maxima. Well, when I drove in here for shoot around this morning with John Sunville, who played a few games in this building uh, a few years ago, he he was impressed with some of the new facilities the Sooners yeah, are new, putting new, up here. Two new practice facilities, yeah. new locker room. Uh, the practice facility on the men's side, you take a look at the training room, named after legendary coach Bruce Drake, who took the Sooners to their first Final Four, 1938-39. Alex Brown, the trainer, will like his new room and there's uh, a film room. I love this. <laughs> you want one of uh, your house, Yeah, huh? a little theater for 20. Well, Joe Castiglione's done a great job as athletic director here. You take a look at the money that was raised to build it. And we're going to get the folks from Guinness in here, but we believe they have the highest shower heads in the whole world here <laughs> <laughs> in this locker room. They've got to be nine and a half, ten feet off the ground. Selby playing with two fouls, reaches in, knocks it away, and now Taj Holden has committed the foul. Kelvin Sampson told us this morning, John, he loves to bring Selby off the bench because he gives the other team matchup problems. They don't know what to do with him, and that's been the case here tonight. Well, a good look at what he does. He's only 6'6". He's not a guard. He doesn't shoot a lot from outside, though he's knocked in a long one today. He defends. He's quick enough. He bothers big guys. He rebounds well. Very athletic. Quick to the ball. He and McGee both playing with two fouls right now. Here's Jason Dietrich into the game. Another good score for yep. Kelvin Simpson. And another junior college player. This is his first attempt. And back comes Dixon. Wilcox tries to fire it in. And Maryland commits yet another turnover. There, sixth. Dietrich all the way. Well, Gary Williams knows his ball club cannot come here and turn the ball over. Dietrich, a first-team junior college All-American last year out of Southwest Missouri State West Plains. This Oklahoma program so reliant on junior college players, and they're all having an impact tonight. Holden takes a bump, throws up a prayer, and it's turned over again. Oh, I thought 
thought White was going to give it right back. Yeah, me too. Could have just given it right back. Price has a layup. Is it physical? Yes, it is. Good defense. And watch Jason Dietrich coast to coast. At 6'5", again, you mentioned his first year here. I tell you, Oklahoma is now swarming defensively. Here's an opportunity for Quantus White to kick it right back. Alice Price, his high school teammate, yeah. would have had a layup. Especially because they played together for a few years in high school. And I'm sure they played together just growing up in the playgrounds, yep. having fun. 30-second timeout taken by Maryland. One thing Kelvin Sampson loved about reuniting White and Price is that not only did they play together in high school, but White in junior college ran, according to Sampson, virtually an identical offense as Oklahoma runs here. So he stepped in pretty easily. One point lead for Maryland while we're in the timeout back to the studio. Thank you. We have an upset tonight as St. Joe's number 18 in the country taking on Georgia State in the Tournament of Champions in Charlotte. How about Thomas Terrell behind the back to Cedric Patton, the hoop and the foul. This one is over. Georgia State winning by five. Of course, Lefty Drizel used to be a Maryland guy. Lefty Drizel. Boy, they're a pretty good team, Georgia State. You like State. that team. Yeah, did their uh, championship game it. in their conference last year. Kelvin Sampson. And Gary Williams, Kelvin Sampson, we talked about all the success that they've had at Oklahoma. You do this conference every year. How about finishing in the top three in this conference in six of his seven years, given all the good programs they have here? Tough to do. I mean, he has put together an outstanding program. You mentioned junior college kids that have helped year in, year out. It's not easy to take some kids and blend them with the others. And this guy doesn't. He's a no-nonsense coach. They have tough, spirited practices. And this team, with the new faces, will continue to get better and contend for a Big 12 championship. One of five Big 12 teams ranked in the top 25 right now. Baxter back into the game, double team, finds the open man in Mutah. Good pass, zone defense, a double team down low, top man didn't rotate. Mouton transfer from Tulane, now a senior, second year with Maryland. The outstanding score, too. Oh, boy. Bad decision there by Selvin. Nicholas finds Dixon. Boy, he just blows by guys in a heartbeat. That's why he's an All-American. Nicholas pulled it back because he didn't have numbers, but Dixon had a number. Yeah. I mean, he could take it. He, he saw the opening. And then the little floater. Does it as well as anyone. Dixon likely will become a first-team All-ACC player for the third consecutive year. Heavy Arab with a miss. Good rebound, McGee. Strong. Could be the key for Oklahoma's success this season. McGee not known for battling inside. Right. Well, we talked about him at shoot-around today. He had 19 rebounds in a game against St. Bonaventure this year, but in two other games, he had no rebounds at all. Dixon steps back, a little short on the three, and a foul over the back, committed by Holden, who may be hurt again. Now look at the inside position on the offensive end by Aaron McGee. Solid year a year ago, the all-newcomer team in the Big 12 Conference, and on the other end. Take a look at the elbow. Ooh. Right across the top, it has been a tough start for Todd Holden. Sure has, and he's going to go out again as Wilcox comes in. What a rotation Gary Williams has. Powerful. Yeah, when they bring Wilcox in, they really don't lose anything. Jabari Brown has returned. Nice little handoff to Dietrich, but Lonnie Baxter got him from behind. Yeah, such a good block. Keep your body away from fouling. Gambling uh, with Selby because of the size, and they told us that Wilcox knew how to dunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're checking the standard right now. They're going, holy smoke. Maryland by four. Wilcox making some noise. Here's a rock. Jabari Brown baseline. They don't expect Brown to score a big number, but he gives... Kelvin Sampson, maybe his first legitimate shot blocker since yeah. he's been open. 6'10 long, rangy, perfect athlete. And the Sooners won't go away here against the number two team in the country. Lake, long range three. Usually a guy who dishes first does not look for his shot very often. Hollis Price with a floater. Tip is good. Price, only two shot attempts in this ballgame. Leading score, but not forcing anything. A 
Again gambling. Mouton misses the jumper. And Oklahoma can take the lead. Get ready for the roof to get blown off this place if they do. Looking for Dietrich. Shot clock at 15. And out of control, a little bit into traffic. It's going to go back over to the Terps. Wise, says Kelvin Sampson. A lot of other things that have gone right. It's a tie game here in Norman. Do you need a faster computer? Wait less and experience more with the Elite PC 4500 series featuring the AMD Athlon XP processor with Qantas Speed Architecture. With the Elite PC 4500 series desktop, you can send emails, receive instant messages, and listen to MP3s all at the same time. Download family photos in a flash, boost software performance for smooth, responsive gaming, and quickly edit home movies. This incredible offer includes an AMD Athlon XP processor 1700 plus, 40 gigabyte hard drive, 256 megabytes of RAM, network adapter, Microsoft Windows XP operating system and more, all for only $5.99. But there's more. We'll also include nine professional software programs, including Quicken, McAfee, Virus Scan, and more at no additional cost. Nearly $200 worth of free software. And if you call now, you can add a 17-inch monitor for just $100. This entire package with free software and 17-inch monitor is just $6.99. Call now at 480-317-0825 to place your order or visit ElitePC.com. Elite PC, Arizona's direct source for computers. There's only one neighborhood where the legends compete in the greatest games in history, ESPN Classic. Only ESPN Classic has the greatest games from the NFL, baseball, NBA, NHL, NASCAR, and fights from the largest boxing library in the world. Call 1-800-CLASSIC to get all your favorite classic sports. Plus, Sports Century, the Emmy and Peabody Award winning series that profiles the top 50 athletes of all time and beyond. To get ESPN Classic, call 1-800-CLASSIC today. Well, we can strike a team from the list of unbeaten Cincinnati taking on Mississippi State. Stevie Logan from way downtown as Mississippi State's going to fall for the first time this year, Dan. Wow, Pam, lopsided there. The Bearcats getting better and better. Yes, they are. Here's Oklahoma. Been pretty impressed with the way they have competed. I think Selby really gave them a spark off the bench, and he and McGee playing with two fouls. But what are they going to do with the big guy, Baxter, who's already got eight rebounds? points eight rebounds Very interesting what happened Oklahoma has now been getting back defensively and they have forced Maryland Allen has seven turnovers early in the game they got a lot of easy open looks and that has gone away got a tie up and that'll turn it over to Oklahoma as they double team Baxter and force the turnover well, once Lonnie catches this ball down low watch the weak side help coming from all angles good job by Jabari Brown Yosef Zendre into the game now for Oklahoma. Junior born in Hungary. Another player who started his collegiate career at the junior college level. 3-2 zone by the Terrapins. They're going to have to find Hollis Price on the outside. Ebi Ara will look for his jumper. Price still scoreless, averaging 18 points per game. There's that long jumper and the rebound to Wilcox. And Maryland has made Hollis Price really work to find an open. And that was the theme of their shoot around today. Make somebody else beat you. Are you kidding me? Did you see that pass? And it won't go. Boy, Wilcox almost touched it in the cylinder. I don't know how Blake saw Dixon that far away. Price wants the ball again. They got to get him going. Somewhat of a coming out year for Hollis Price. Scoring up better than six points per game from last year. Tough catch there for White. Extremely fast player on the all underrated team a year ago in the Big 12. Got a good one going here in Norman. Tied at 25. Wilcox with a block. Maryland ranks second in the nation. Taking on number 21, Oklahoma. And there's another foul caused at the end result of a great feed from Steve Blake. They get it off the glass. And that's how it's. Steve Blake will find you. You run the floor, find an opening. And not only that, he puts it right on the money. He has a catchable ball. Now, here's the block you mentioned. Maryland outstanding defensively blocking shots. Nice thing is, look at that pass. Catchable ball. It's not at the knees. It's not by the ankles. It's not too high. And back to the line, Lonnie Baxter, one of the few weaknesses in his game. Free throw shooting 
60% on the year. And as a team, Maryland is only a 63% free throw shooting team. Contrast that to Oklahoma, fifth in the country at 78% as a team. Yeah, the Sooners a year ago led the Big 12 Conference at 74%. Outstanding perimeter shooting team. Not a lot on the inside game, not a lot of guys on the low post. Looks like Oklahoma's having a little bit of trouble right now figuring out this new look. There's a turnover. Blake with a steal. He'll force it on White. Can't get it to go. No good hustle. I thought Blake may hesitate, dribble, and then try to explode. Use his 6-3 body against a smaller white. Timeout taken by Oklahoma with 5.20 to play and a close one here in the first half. I got some football action for you. A special Saturday night edition of Monday Night Football because of the holiday. We've got the Raiders and the Titans. Rich Gannon and Oakland try to improve their playoff position and maybe shoot for home field in the AFC while the Titans need wins in a hurry to keep their slim Playoff hopes alive. It's preceded by Monday Night Countdown, preceded, presented rather by UPS tomorrow night on ABC. You know, kind of a football pass right here. How about that? You're on the baseline. Your teammates all the way in the other corner. The only problem with that, Juan Dixon did knock that jump shot in. But the ability of Steve Blake to find his teammates and then deliver. And if you're a he's, shooter, he's impressive. Or a big guy who runs the oh, floor, you, you got to love cool. having him. You know, you pick a, uh, in the playgrounds, when you're picking teams, you pick him first. Because yeah, that's you say, right. Hey, I want him on my spot. Again, Maryland can stay in this zone defense until Oklahoma can find their shooters. And Price is the guy hitting better than 50% from three-point range this season. Well, Maryland is, is such a quick team defensively. They can help and recover. glass and let him attack. That's huh? right. Get the shot up there. He looks like a guy who could pick a quarter off the top of the backboard with that kind of elevation. You know, Kelvin Sampson scheduled last week a game on Saturday, a game on Sunday because Jabari Brown was eligible and they knew they wanted him some games. They got three quick games before this one. I can see why. Nicholas off balance. Oklahoma basketball. What an unbelievable follow dunk by Jabari Brown last time down the floor. Good ball rotation. Price wide open. Can't knock it down. Oklahoma with a one-point lead. Not for long as Blake knocks down a three. Point guard responsibility in making decisions. The right place, the right time. Steve Blake pushed it, didn't have one lane, didn't have the other, but had his open jump shot. Selby, around with a pretty good look, and a pretty good stroke. Baxter strong inside. Another assist. The lead has gone back and forth a couple of times in the last minute or so. Oklahoma hanging with Maryland. And the thing I noticed about the Terrapins defensively, Dan, their hands are down in this zone defense. Oklahoma is able to visually see teammates. They can stand and pass it around. Maryland's kind of putting their hands down. They've got to get those hands up, make it more difficult. Hands up. How about the whole body up in the air for Jabari Brown? Not once, but twice tonight. Maryland 31, Oklahoma 30 here in North. Fifty-five horsepower Nissan Maxima. Winter means flakes. We're not talking snow. We're talking winter dandruff. The colder it gets, the worse dandruff gets. Neutrogena T-Gel Intensive Anti-Flake Shampoo fights dandruff three ways. Stop winter dandruff. Neutrogena T-Gel. It works. 
If you do not find a way, no one will. A world beyond imagination. The rain must be destroyed. A journey beyond belief. Newsweek calls The Lord of the Rings a ring to rule the screen. It has real passion, real emotion, real terror. Ah! And Rolling Stone raves, it is the best film of the year. The Lord of the Rings, directed by Peter Jackson, rated PG-13, now playing. Now at Radio Shack, make no payments and pay no interest till January 2003 with a $297 minimum amount financed on your Radio Shack Answers Plus credit card. Only at Radio Shack get great deals on home audio, video, computers, handhelds, and more. But hurry, this great offer won't last long. Well, tonight may be an indication of the kind of college basketball action to come this weekend. Get started early tomorrow, noon Eastern time. A veteran Wake Forest squad, 20th in the nation, heads to New York to take on St. John's. And then it's Seton Hall with all those great guards taking on number 17, Michigan State at 2 Eastern here on ESPN. And don't forget, tomorrow night at 9 Eastern from St. Louis, the Bragg and Rights game. Illinois and Missouri from the Saturday. And you will be there, right? I'm looking is that forward your to first that. one? Yes, it oh, is. You will love it. You'll absolutely love it. Everybody says it's a, a tremendous game, and we were excited about this one here tonight. And, and with good reason, it appears. It has been a great atmosphere, great effort by these Oklahoma kids. They're shooting the ball better the last few minutes, and they're staying with the number two team in the country right now. They've also played through some foul trouble rather impressively. Hollis Price gets by Dixon, and that's not easy to do. I tell you what, Dixon and Price are very similar players. Now, Dixon's an All-American, a couple inches taller, but they're both quick, they're fast, they're feisty. If you are a fan of either team, you love that kid on your squad. First points of the night for Hollis Price and the ninth lead change in this game already. Now Dixon tries to answer. Little hesitation, can't go. Well, you look at this Oklahoma team with the addition of Brown and Ara, and it has taken their athleticism to a whole different level. Yeah, you throw in Dietrich in the mix, yep. a big time scorer also. Price. Loose ball, corralled by the Terps. Well, maybe not the shot the Sooners needed. Wilcox wants to play a two-man game here with Holden. It's Blake on the wing. And it'll be Maryland ball. Coming up at halftime, Sports Center in game with Pam Ward. We'll check in on the college basketball action, including that Georgia State game that Pam showed us before. Tribute to Dick Schaff, who passed away today at the age of 67. And we certainly send our thoughts to the Schaff family, including our colleague Jeremy, and also Yaramir Yager back in Pittsburgh. Another turnover. The ninth turnover committed by Maryland tonight to only three by Oklahoma. Hurrah, what a first step. Oh, man. Nicholas has Blake with him. It's the trailer in Dixon. And a block is called, and you can count it. Well, we, we've said about everything we could say about Juan Dixon. I, I tell you what, this kid is so explosive. And always play in the rim. He's difficult to defend. You have to challenge him on the outside. He puts it on the floor. He is tough. Takes it to the rim, jumps a little sideways, so Price had the lean to get him. He just never backs down. And, and if well, Price is playing one of the few guys who's actually in his weight class, yeah. well, it doesn't matter how big you are, Dixon's going to go at you. Well, you said it. He has a chance to be all ACC first team three years in a row. I mean, the last the sophomore and junior year to do that, yeah. that says a lot right there. Well, the last Turk to do that was John Lucas almost wow. 30 years ago. You know, John Lucas's son is at Baylor this season, playing well for Dave Bliss. Looking for Brown inside. Maryland collapsing on him. White finds a little room. Finds the open man in Selden. Nice adjustment with the ball. Wilcox made a good attempt, but Selden able to get it around him. Juan is White described by his coach. Not flashy. He just gets it done. Stolen by Price. Pull up from the elbow. Speed knows when to go, when not to go. Maryland's 
going to hold it for the final shot. I doubt they can call the play with this noise, though. Sooners have been in a matchup zone defense. Calvin Sampson talking to him, telling him to back up. You want to find Dixon. Blake. Tough shot won't go. Three seconds. Abby Aram. What a first half here in Norman. A two-point lead for the Sooners as they get a standing ovation heading off the floor. Time now for Sports Center in game as we send you back to Pam Warren. Pam? Oh, thanks, Dan. Terrific first half. What a way to end there for Oklahoma as they take that two-point lead into the break. Lots of other college basketball happening on this Friday before Christmas, including Mississippi State. Some people think they're frauds because they haven't played anybody good. They played somebody good today. Sports Center in game coming up. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Norelco. For an unexpectedly close shave, guaranteed. Put it to the test. Getting the folks at Ask Jeeves to test the Norelco Quadra Action Razor should be easy. Hey, they're smart, right? Will I get a close shave? Signs point to no. This thing's going to chew up my face. But thanks to slots for longer hair and holes for short stubble, they got a close shave without the nicks and cuts of a blade. Well, it's only been a few days, but I'm liking it. They especially loved how easy it was to clean. It needed a quick bath. The Quadra Action has satisfied 99% of the guys who tried it. Except no imitations. Get America's number one selling electric shaver, Norelco. I'm in. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Pliers. Make it a blood light. Edge Gel is going to clean up your act with Edge Clean Shave Gel. Edge Clean. Edge Clean's got a built-in facial cleanser that helps lift dirt and oil every time you lather. To help lift dirt and oil every time you shave. Edge Clean Complete. So clean up your act with Edge Clean Shave Gel. Where are we going? To see the lights. This be more perfect. You tell me. This magic moment. Unwrap the magic at JC Penny with stunning quarter carat diamond pendants, earrings, and rings, just $99.99 each. From the only place with gifts sure to make her light up. It's all inside. JC Penny. Every time you use your Discover card, Discover will make a donation to America's relief efforts until we reach our goal of $5 million. Just by doing what you do every day, you can help the victims and families of September 11th. To find out more, call 1-800-DISCOVER or go to discovercard.com. Sports Center in game. Maryland trailing Oklahoma by two at the half. An unbeaten team, Mississippi State, a team that really wasn't getting much respect going into this late December. And they had a shot against a very good Cincinnati team, a good Cincinnati team at least today. Let's take a look first at who they played heading into this game. As you see, not a lot of giant killers there. They played Richmond twice, UL Monroe, and yes, Georgia State, a, a team that's pretty good and came up with an upset win against St. Joseph's tonight. What happened against Cincinnati? Let's take a look. Cincinnati up six in the first half. Steve Logan. 
can hit the three. He had 16 in the first half alone. Later in the first half, Leonard Stokes, pass on the baseline, takes it in for the dunk. Cincinnati up by 10, they led by 12 at the half. And now Logan, that's not a bad crossover. And then he takes it in high off the glass. Cincinnati's lead is now 14. And Stevie, another three ball. And as you see, the score is starting to get out of control. And with just about six minutes left to go, the lead is 74 to 45. So Mississippi State right now is getting clobbered here. This is a second round game in the Las Vegas Classic. Cincinnati right now on the cusp of winning its 10th straight game. So the schedule is definitely getting tougher for the Bulldogs. And it's gonna get even more tough when they take on Kentucky on January 5th. Then they have two other ranked teams as they get into SEC play, starting with Kentucky. They have Alabama twice and then the University of Florida. So that will be a true test for this team. Well, I already gave this away. Georgia State and St. Joe's second half. Lefty Drizel's team is up 73 to 66. Thomas Terrell nailing the three. He had 35 points. That's a tournament record. And now behind the back is Cedric Patton. That's just too good. Georgia State wins it. By the final of 95 to 90, upsetting number 18, St. Joe's. First time these two, two schools have ever played. St. Joseph's sees its sixth game winning streak go by the wayside. This was the first round tournament of champions game at the Charlotte Coliseum. Boston College with the win over Arkansas State, 76 to 70 BC. Went about 5,000 miles or so to Honolulu to play in this one, the Rainbow Classic at the Stan Sheriff Center. Just another day at the office for Troy Bell as he had 20 points, 149 points now over his last five games. College basketball, we got a lot of action for you tomorrow when it starts relatively early at noon Eastern time as number 20 Wake Forest travels to St. John's to take on the Red Storm. Then at 2 Eastern time, follow that up right away with Michigan State and Seton Hall. Both of those games coming your way tomorrow on ESPN. Dick Schaap, a very much loved colleague here at ESPN and also at ABC Sports, passed away earlier today at the age of 67. Dick won several Emmys and wrote a lot of books as well, but mostly he is being remembered for the type of person that he was, Jerry Kramer among those. He had a wonderful, wonderful compassion, uh, love of people, empathy, feeling, depth of emotion, intelligence all of those things and uh, he had a, a great integrity about him a great honesty about him so you you trusted dick and you and you believed in dick and when dick would tell you something uh, or ask you something you could unburden yourself and trust him to use what was favorable and what was not favorable or flattering he would leave out like holiday shopping at Office Depot for my friends and family? Because they have a shipping center right in the store. So I can choose any of their great gifts, wrap and pack them, and Office Depot sends them anywhere in the world. That means I can get just the right thing for everyone on my list. It's empty. Office Depot, proud sponsor of the 2002 U.S. Olympic team. She'll definitely show. Just do it. I'm going to make a collect call. 1-800-COLLECT presents Ava Sablehot. Culture. Careful how you dial, boys. Ava, we always use 1-800-COLLECT. Then you already know it saves at least a buck or two. Of course. It's so easy. Thought you had a call to make. Talk about saving some dough. 1-800-COLLECT. Save a buck or two. Hey, Hallie Eisenberg, drinking a Pepsi. Actually, this isn't a Pepsi. It's new Pepsi Twist with lemon. And I'm not Hallie Eisenberg. I'm Halle Berry. Drinking Pepsi Twist. Well, it's not exactly Pepsi Twist. It's diet Pepsi Twist. And I'm not exactly Halle Berry. You know. I'm Barry Bostwick. Who is Barry Bostwick? Like twists? Try new Pepsi Twist and regular and diet. A lemon twist on that great Pepsi taste. The number one action movie in America is Behind Enemy Lines. Critics call it a run-and-gun popcorn flick, and the New York Times raves. It's an adrenaline-fueled thriller. Behind Enemy Lines, rated PG-13, now playing.
right, listen up, third for two. The red end is your bayonet end. The black end is the buttstock of your weapon. So you better come out here, be aggressive, and fight your buddy. I want to step up, not to show that I'm better, but... That's a point. I believe that I can beat him. Log on and see if Ben steps up or down. Let's do it. Okay, this is for real. Only at GoArmy.com. Introducing the new long-lasting scent of Bob. Bob gets cleaner with new Rainforest Falls Zest. Rainforest Falls Zest. Hello. You just can't find a better clean. Juan Dixon has nine points to lead Maryland, but it's not enough to catch up with Oklahoma. The Sooners at the break with a two-point lead over number two, Maryland. And nearby the University of Maryland at the MCI Center, that's Yarmir Yager's new home. His old home, of course, is Pittsburgh, where he starred for the Penguins for the last 11 years. And tonight, for the first time, he went back to Pittsburgh to play the Pens. Before the game, he had these, these thoughts. I don't expect much uh, from that, and I know it's going to be a lot of people be upset. Up, I don't know what, you know, it's going to be a lot of people booing me, but, you know, I'm not, you know, it's fine with me. I, I got no problem with that. Well, we'll see if the fans and he had any more problems during the game. He's getting ready to go. You know, he had some problems scoring, actually, early. The rebound attempt, how about deflected over the net and into the seats. Second period now caps up 1-0 on Chris Simon's goal. Darius Kasparaitis beats Olaf Kolzig to tie it up. His first of the year makes it 1-1. One one. Darius has some fans. Penn's now up 2-1, under 10 seconds to go in the second. Toby Peterson beating Kolzig late in the period. As you take a look, it, it just slips right in between Ole and the post. Looks like there was about a half an inch or so, and somehow the puck found the back of the net. Now the Red Wings and San Jose, Sergei Fedorov with a slapper, Chris Draper. There for the rebound, but Evgeny Nabokov playing a spectacular goal early, gets beaten, wings up one nothing. Same score, Stevie Y, Eiserman in the corner. Beats Nabokov, wings up two to nothing. They were very frustrated early in this game by Nabokov, but we're finally able to solve them. The Nuggets and the Spurs first quarter. Spurs up 15. Antonio Daniels, Tim Duncan for Duncan. Spurs up 34-17. Second quarter, the lead's now 20. Charles Smith, do we hear 23? Yes, we do, as he nails the three ball. Now 50 to 29 in the second quarter. Smith does it again. Spurs leading at that point 53 to 29 and they are up big 66 to 48. Montana and Furman playing for the National Championship Division 1 AA. That is Johanse Humphrey, a two-yard touchdown run to give Montana the lead. They held on to win it 13 to 6. Actually didn't have to hold on. Furman scored on a crazy touchdown play, the last play of the game. Congratulations to the Grizz. Steve Levy and John Anderson will have much more on that. Plus, Michael Jordan's Wizards playing good basketball. Boomer says who will win between the Dolphins and the Patriots, and you get a chance for the NFL MVP. That follows Maryland and Oklahoma right here on ESPN. Oklahoma, Michael Grinnan dunks it over Steve Blake. Maryland down by two at the break. We'll be back with the second half. It's a holiday tradition. Oh, there's no place like home. Time Life brings you the treasury of Christmas. Have a holly jolly Christmas. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer. Chestnuts roasting on it. The Time Life treasury of Christmas on two CDs or two cassettes. Rocking around the Christmas tree at the Christmas You'll get 50 party. holiday favorites. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle each song brings you the wonder of Christmas. Have yourself a so call now and enjoy the treasury of Christmas. Call 800-514-7575 or send $26.99 for two CDs or two cassettes plus $4.99 shipping and handling to the address on your screen. Call now or visit us online. Wow, MP3 player, digital camera, DVD player, very nice. Looks like some of these kids are going to be very happy this holiday. <laughs> kids! <laughs> I'll be right there. Uh, we know how you feel. And that's why Circuit City has great gift ideas this holiday season. Circuit City, we're with you. Hey! <laughs> 
My wife loves these things. <laughs> All wives love things. <laughs> Could you... Uh... Store up on great holiday gifts at Pep Boys. Buy a Delta Aluminum Toolbox, a Weston Grill Guard or Step Bar, or some cool performance accessories like these slick APC taillights. Get your holiday gifts now at Pep Boys. Store up on great holiday gifts at Pep Boys. Get a free spotlight, toolbox, or any of these great gifts absolutely free when you buy accessories, stereos, electronics, tools, or performance products now through December 24th. It's the great gift giveaway only at Pep Boys. presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Circuit City. We know how you feel. That's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. Back in Norman, Dan Schulman, John Sundbold with you. You know, the first four minutes of the game, John, Maryland was scoring pretty easily in transition. Something happened in that under-16 timeout. What did Kelvin Sampson well, say? Well, timeout, he said, guys, we got to get back defensively. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the game changed. They put some pressure on Maryland to score and run their half-court offense. All of a sudden, Maryland start turning the ball over. When you're throwing it inside, active hands, active defensively, this led to easier shots on the offensive end for Oklahoma. The big difference, 10 turnovers in that first half for Maryland. And when you think about turnovers, some hurt you and some don't. Seven steals by Oklahoma. And steals usually convert to opportunities on the other end. Jabari Brown, Darian Selby, Jason Dietrich. A lot of these guys just getting acclimated to the Oklahoma program had big first halves. Lonnie Baxter now with nine points and eight rebounds already in this game. Well, more depth on that Sooner bench than has been in the past. A lot of bodies played in that first half. Yep. Everyone contributed, and Lonnie Baxter starts that second half as though they need to get him the basketball. Let him go to work. There's the guy Oklahoma wants to get the basketball to, and Hollis Price. Boy, the crowd right back into it again. Oh, Gets top it. shot. Came from the baseline, fading away. Good pass from Holden. And as you said in the first half, that's what separates Dixon from so many other yeah, players. Right. He can score so many different ways. Well, that was long from the moment he and left he, his hand. he's so active off the ball. When he has it, he's active. But away from the ball, he's active. He's moving. He's cutting. He's slashing. He's so quick, it's hard to stay with him. Now the turnover committed to by Maryland, and that was one of the problems, as John mentioned in the first half. Ten turnovers committed by the Terps to just three by the Sooners, and as you pointed out, steals lead to easy yeah, buckets at the other end. Steals lead to easy buckets. Other way, Gary Williams said, if we can keep Oklahoma in a half-court set and away from getting open looks on their break, we've got a good chance. This is just the second ranked team that Oklahoma has played this year. The first, Michigan State in the preseason NIT, and the Sooners lost that game. They're only lost in the season. They will uh, play a few ranked teams. Yeah, the start, that's huh? true. It will get tougher. Now, Maryland's had a bit of a tougher schedule. They're used to playing ranked teams, but they're a little frustrated with what's going on here tonight. Well, a little switch down low, and you take a look. Dodge Holden thought he got held. And now picks up a foul. Looks like he had all ball. That foul, a big one. Number three on Taj Holden, who between fouls and two injuries tonight has not been able to play all that much. But he's going to come out again here for Chris Wilcox. Of course, Holden and Wilcox taking over for the departed Terrence Morris. And Holden, a big body, but more of a perimeter player offensively. Wilcox, not quite as big as Holden, but more of a power guy inside. Likes to rebound and, and dunk the ball, basically. Well, I don't doubt we're watching one of the best teams in the country in Maryland. Whether they win or lose tonight, I mean, Oklahoma's going to give them all they want in this building. This Maryland squad. They've got experience. They're tough. They're fast. They're physical. Got to handle it better. Tough look for Price. Oh, good rebound. Good yeah, Wilcox just over the top of McGee, but he did it cleanly. That's simply going after the ball. Mouton, nice look to Dixon. 
Uh, a, different, a difference, though, than the first three minutes. Remember how Maryland pushed it down, got easy shots. Yep. They have not been able to get those after that first time out, 16-minute mark. Triple team on Baxter, and it pays off. He's having to work for his points tonight. Nice look. And Wilcox with a block on a raw, but McGee, the lefty, gets it to go. How quickly, though, Wilcox can get off his feet. The raw thought he had an easy one. Aaron McGee, the senior from Aurora, Illinois, gives Oklahoma its largest lead of the night, 41-38. Baxter has it stripped away. He put it on the floor. Hollis Price, we talked about his quickness with his feet, his quickness with his hands, and here's another quick play. Chris Wilcox off his feet. Aaron McGee stays with it, though. Power and the finish. He has struggled a little bit tonight finishing those close shots. You look at this Oklahoma team of the guys who play regularly. McGee, Selby, and Price are the only guys who were with the program last year. But they look like the bunch that's been together a lot longer than yes, that. Yes, they do. Price gets a screen. Left it short. Long rebound. Oklahoma ball. It's a ball club that last year relied a lot on G.R. Raymond. He was suspended and then off the team late in the year. Nolan Johnson took over and was outstanding down the stretch for this ball club. Hollis Price was all tournament team in a Big 12 tournament, so that was kind of his emergence maybe as somewhat of a leader. Now Price appears to have some help this year with the arrival of Ara and Brown and others. Selby battling, and he's fouled by Mutat, who says, all oh, ball! Well, relentless right now, the Sooners, on the offensive glass. And Gary Williams talked to us this afternoon about, he knows how tough Kelvin's teams play, especially in this building, at home against the number two team in the country. <laughs> Mutat trying to figure out which official to blame. <laughs> Selby to the line, and this is the first. I think Selby had a key play early in the first half, and all it was was a foul, but he absolutely clobbered Lonnie Baxter, and it may have helped all of his teammates pick up their intensity, because from that moment on, they played like a different team. Well, a senior, a captain, you expect those things. Maryland playing its first true road game of the season, John. Nothing but home games and neutral site games until now, and not a run-of-the-mill road game in this environment tonight. Blake from the corner. Good effort by Price. Well, they're patient here, too. White trying to shake Blake. Can't do it. And who else but Juan Dixon in there making it happen? We'll step aside our first time out here in the second half. The Sooners have extended their lead to four. What's with the cap? You got a little league game today or something? I'm just used to it. You know, a lot of people aren't crazy about their hair. Especially if you got flakes. I tell them, use this whole new head and shoulders to help stop flakes before they even start. Oh, forgot your hat. No thanks. Try new head and shoulders. It's tough to see things clearly these days. The situation in the world, our economy, your investments. But investing is the job at Janus. And Janus is working to spot opportunities. Using the approach that's worked long term. Applying lessons from the recent past. Investing in companies that show signs they can perform in this economy and into the next. Get there. Janice. Stood up and became a hero. Been waiting for three years for someone to drop that jerk. Now the guy that acted like a kid. Being that guy is not the answer. Will become the man everyone can cheer for. Tim Allen. You talking to me? Joe Somebody. Ready PG. Now playing. Attention vegetarians. Viewing discretion advised. It's the new Ultimate Meat Lovers Pizza from Pizza Hut. Piled high with an awesome array of six succulent meat toppings. And now smothered in not one, not two, but six kinds of cheese. Six meat toppings and six cheeses out. For the most seriously satisfying pizza on earth, you'd expect to pay $12.99. But it's only $8.99. That's right, $8.99. The new Ultimate Meat Lovers Pizza, only at Pizza Hut. Vegetarians resume normal viewing. 
Oklahoma, I guess you could say an underdog, even though they're ranked playing the number two team of the country. Yes, here at home, but what an impressive performance by the Sooners so far. Tomorrow night, 7 Eastern on ESPN, a sports center will look back at the sports figures who have left us in 2001, including Al McGuire, Dale Earnhardt, Willie Stargell, and Corey Stringer. And, of course, the sports world was touched by tragedy yet again today. A colleague of ours and a man who touched everyone he knew, Dick Schaap, passed away today at the age of 67. And tomorrow night, Sports Center Remembers will be dedicated to Dick Schaap. Oklahoma 42, Maryland 38. Dan Schulman, John Sunderbold with you here in Norman, enjoying this ball game. Now the officials are going to talk it over to see if that ball was tipped or not. It may have been tipped twice on the way out of bounds. And smart. Oh, wow. Ah, John Clockerty, the Surprise. lead official, comes in and overrules. And Juan Dixon knows he probably got away with one. Dixon went over the top of the screen. Price went underneath to watch where Dixon comes from. See the deflection unless Price touched it. Yeah, it didn't look like it. Dixon touched it. Yeah. And he knew he did. He kind of had that little sheepish look on and tried to get away with one, and he did. Wilcox doesn't touch so another turnover committed by Maryland, their 13th tonight, and Gary Williams is starting to work up a sweat. The Terps are 8-1. Their only loss came in their first game of the season of the coaches versus cancer. Lost to Arizona when we started to realize how good the Wildcats are. Yeah, Luke's, uh, Luke's ball clubs play well in New York. Yes, they do. Another turnover. John Clockerty's getting a workout now. But since then, Maryland has defeated the likes of Temple, Illinois, Princeton, UConn, so some pretty good wins for Maryland already. But again, this is their first true road game of the season, and that's a different animal. Nicholas, how's he going to get it over Brown? He's not. Good matchup. Quick this on, quick this right here. Nicholas for three. Boy, good boxing out all over the place. As we revisit the ESPN USA Today top ten, starting to run out of unbeatens, just three in this group. Yep. The ACC with three ranked teams in the top five. And Virginia, a big win at Georgetown yes. last night. Impressive. That's a good, good ball club. Give me your thoughts on Oklahoma State. Ooh, undefeated. They've got a big matchup tomorrow night against Arkansas. Have not had to play a tough schedule yet. Going on the road at Arkansas. Eddie Sutton returns to the land yes. where he took the Razorbacks to the Final Four. You're going to have some fun in this conference this year. Oh, it's going to be terrific. Oklahoma State, a very veteran ball club. Blake comes off a screen and Money. knocks down the three. Good patience that time by the Terrapins. Set good screens, got a good look. Blake's second three of the night. He's also got four assists and no turnovers. With all the turnover problems Maryland has had, you can't blame Blake. A little bit quieter here in the second half after an explosive first half. And you cannot stand and watch on the offensive end because Maryland will each up defensively. You've got to have better movements, quicker, harder. White left hand, no good. Loose ball. Brown kicks it out. Fresh 35. Selby inside. Floater. No good. Rebound, no good. Maryland ball. Two shooters to the floor. Even Wilcox couldn't bring that one down, but it stays with Maryland. And Blake had a little too much on that pass. Wilcox couldn't quite get his hands. Take a look at this. He's doing it on the move going forward and a little too much. Just couldn't get to it. Good idea. Brown comes out. McGee comes in for Oklahoma. Maryland. Oh, my goodness. Dixon's got yeah. it. Can't get it. Maryland could have retaken the lead. But they're bitten by the turnover bug again. Well, and unforced. <laughs> Oklahoma ball. You know, Maryland has not put a lot of pressure full court or really any half court traps. Always known as a team that love to press. They're a bigger squad this year. Arah, quick turn. Boy, he faces up in a hurry. Abby Arah now with 10. Air ball at the other end. Oklahoma on the run. Price flying. Dietrich open. Tip by Selby. A damn defensively. Dietrich outstanding. Got in the face of Dixon on one end. 
He can hear him. It's the largest lead of the night for the Sooners. Silverado Heavy Duty. Available with the new Duramax diesel. The most powerful diesel you can get in a pickup. Silverado Heavy Duty. More truck from Chevy. I am the Black & Decker pivot driver. At first glance, I seem rather straight, but in a flash, I snap into action. I'm the only screwdriver with the secret identity. I am the pivot driver. I am built by Black & Decker. Winter means flakes. We're not talking snow. We're talking winter dandruff. The colder it gets, the worse dandruff gets. Neutrogena T-Gel Intensive Anti-Flake Shampoo fights dandruff three ways. Stop winter dandruff. Neutrogena T-Gel. It works. Where are we going? To see the lights. Could this be more perfect? You tell me. This magic moment. Unwrap the magic at JCPenney with stunning quarter carat diamond pendants, earrings, and rings. Just $99.99 each. From the only place with gifts sure to make her light up. It's all inside. JCPenney. Talked a lot about Maryland's size at the beginning of the program, but Gary Williams talked to us about Oklahoma's team quickness and athleticism, and we're seeing that tonight. And Darian Selvi off the bench, the senior, the captain, 10 points active. He's been defensively active. He's frustrated. You see the excitement on that Sooner sideline. Ebi Ara with 10. It's been a real balanced effort for Oklahoma tonight. Gary Williams is working himself into a lather over on that Maryland bench. 15 turnovers committed by the Terrapins tonight. Blake can settle him down. Could step out by Selby making Blake go wide of the screen. Mouton's the energy guy for Maryland. Shots blocked. Around. Oh, Price with a bad decision there. Whoops, look out. Well, Price got off his feet. And we know what happens unless you have have something automatic. Here in Norman, midway through the second half, the Oklahoma Sooners try to make their first real statement on a national level this season. Dan Schulman, John Sunvold with you. Oklahoma with a nice road win at Arkansas, a good Arkansas team earlier. But to play the number two team in the country, a team that's won eight in a row, this could be a real breakout victory for Kelvin Sampson's team. And again, a team, Maryland, that many pick to be another a Final Four team. If you're going to pick four teams, they're probably one of them. Good pass. And Wilcox loses his man to lay it in. But Oklahoma, in their last three games, they've averaged better than 100 points per game in three lopsided wins, but, but against much, much weaker competition. This is a huge step up for them, and there they are again on the glass. What's interesting now is watching Maryland defensively. They're not putting a body on any of the suitors. They're just simply trying to go to the ball. Oklahoma's getting a running start, and they are keeping that ball alive. And the rebounding numbers now favor Oklahoma. What do we got? Selby maybe with a foul? Delvin Sampson's not sure. Maybe Ebby Ara with a hole down low. Schedule timeout here. Oklahoma playing well, working hard, and leading Maryland by five. Get unlimited mobile phone service from $29.95 a month. No credit checks, no contracts, no deposits, and no age limits. Call now. We use our phone both at home and on the road. It's great. We cut our monthly phone bill in half. With this special offer, you get unlimited anytime local minutes in the Phoenix local area for just $29.95 a month. I want my own phone. Even young people can have phones. It's fast and affordable, and airtime is unlimited. Call now and get connected for just $69.95. You'll receive a new wireless digital phone. Your first month of service is free, and there's no activation fee. You'll also receive a car charger, leather case, and hands-free kit at no extra charge. If you call right now, we'll also include a faceplate and an antenna booster absolutely free. That's over a $250 value, all for just $69.95. 
This offer won't last long, so call toll-free right now. 1-866-292-5488. You can't afford not to get one. Operators are standing by, so call 1-866-292-5488. So call right now. Sports Center remembers Legends of 2001, 7 o'clock Saturday on ESPN. Next on Sports Center, Jordan and the Wizards look to push their win streak to eight games. And how injuries to Jerome Bettis and Steve McNair will affect their play this weekend. Steve Levy, John Anderson, Sports Center after the game. Back at the Noble Center here in Norman, a five-point lead for the hometown Sooners over Maryland. Here's a look at our CDW computer warehouse storyline and turnovers certainly have been a huge part of the problem for Maryland tonight. Lonnie Baxter, of the numbers you see there, just two points and none of the rebounds coming here in the second half. Darian Selby off the bench. Kelvin Sampson was bang on. He said, I put him in there. Energy. Other teams don't know how to match up with them. And Oklahoma's got a few tweeners, 6'5 right. to 6'7, good athletes. Maryland doesn't have that many of that type of player. Yeah, they've got big bodies and then they have smaller bodies. But Oklahoma, we talked to Kelvin Sampson and said, you know, can you match up with the size? And he kind of had a look on his face and said, well, we'll show up yep. and, and we'll get after him. And they have. And Selby at 6'6 has had to defend a guy like Wilcox at 6'10 tonight, but he's been so active. Well, how quickly Selby and Arag get off their feet and get to the ball first. And at the other end, how much inside damage Oklahoma's been able to do. Well, we take a look at some of the highlights. Jabari Brown obviously has been tough inside there. Selby with the finish, keeping the ball alive, and they've been able to go after him. And they've been able to score without Hollis Price having a big game. He's got six points tonight. Four other Sooners have more. Dietrich, no. And the rebound to hold it. Now, where this team will develop, this Oklahoma ball club, is patience on the offensive end. Dietrich and Ara have to be more patient when they're looking at their shot. You don't have to take the first one available. Reset it, put it back into McGee, make Maryland play defense. And again, junior college players try to get used to the system, to the program. Dietrich, great step through, and he knocks it down. The positive of that, Dan, is we'll do it again. We're not back right. We won't worry about the first miss. They collapse on a Mouton, and he has to kick it back out. Oklahoma with its largest lead of the game. Boy, Ron, tough to get it over him. Let's send you to Pat Moore. All right, Dan, North Carolina trying to avoid falling to two and five on the season, but it's a tough one tonight, taking on the College of Charleston and Charlotte and Shannon Chambers. Knocks it down. Carolina trailing early in this one by eight. Boy, their struggles continue. There's the jump hook for Wilcox, and that's the shot Gary Williams told us to watch out for today. Boy, North Carolina survived against Binghamton, new to Division I, already losses at home to Hampton and Davidson. Shot clock did not reset it to 20. McGee fades away. The follow is good from the weak side by Dietrich. And again, no block out. Not one Maryland body is blocking any of the Sooners out, and the Sooners are attacking. You and I among the few not standing in this building right now. Baxter's back in, but they can't get him the ball. And he's got a guy who's 6'5 on him. Yeah. And at times they've tried to lob it, but the 6'5 either Sylvia or Rocky get off their feet and bottom. Chris Wilcox is another bucket. Good patience. The key for Maryland is Steve Blake and Juan Dixon will not be wrapped. They've got to find a way to get a back through some touches inside. Aaron McGee for three. Not close to the rebound of Wilcox. You don't mind that shot if they're not running at you. He's a good open shooter, but if they're running at him, he shouldn't take it. There's Baxter muscling his way in, and he'll draw the foul before the shot. Now take a look at the Sooners when the shot goes up. Look at Maryland standing and watching. Here comes Jason Dietrich for an easy one. I mean, all the heads of the Terrapins just simply turning, watching. Take a look at the rebound totals. 
McGee out and Jabari Brown back in for the Sooners. Holden has returned for Maryland. Lob it inside for Baxter. Can't handle it. Well, and, and the, they're staring at Baxter. You, you can't stare at your receiver and just telegraph it. It allows everybody else to be part of that ball defensively. They have been so much more comfortable in transition than in the half court tonight, and they just haven't been able to get in transition here in the second half. Selby, he's been huge off the bench, lost the handle. And then gets called for the foul. Kelvin Sampson pleading for help. That's Selby's fourth personal. He got it. That's why Kelvin Sampson is upset. Good defense, lost some ball. And Didn't need that one, did he? And it's going to cost him some playing time as McGee checks right back in. Well, and Darian Selby looked over at Kelvin Sampson and kind of wanted to stay, and Kelvin looks to have no choice. Tough to argue with the work Selby's done when he has been on the floor. A big size mismatch again inside. Luton open from 15 and rattles out. The block out solid and active when the ball comes off the rim. Jabari Brown only 210 pounds stolen by Dixon. Wow. Led the ACC in steals each of the last two years, but Hollis Price runs them down. Wouldn't you love to see those two in a 60-yard dash? How about that? Dietrich, don't leave him alone. You know, his shot has been right on, but a little short with his miss. I mean, everyone looks good, just front of the iron. All he has to do is release it a little bit earlier on his way up on the shot. He'll be fine. Hold it. Pretty far from the basket, though. Brown stood his ground. Good defense by Jabari Brown. You know, Juan Dixon hasn't been able to get any looks here in the second half either. Stolen by Mouton. Nice job. Well, I was about, about to mention that Juanis White has had a solid game without turnover. And then all of a sudden, a lazy pass. Byron Mouton with the slip. Slowly but surely, the Terrapins putting more pressure now on this Oklahoma team on the defensive end. They were down by seven a couple of minutes ago. They've got it back to three. White with a lane to the basket. There are some tired bodies in this ballgame, Dan. Jabari Brown slow to get to his feet. Now some of those tired bodies will get a brief rest. Stay with us. Looking at a good finish here in Oklahoma. Edge Gel is going to clean up your act with Edge Clean Shave Gel. Edge Clean. Edge Clean's got a built-in facial cleanser that helps lift dirt and oil every time you lather. To help lift dirt and oil every time you shave. Edge Clean Complete. So clean up your act with Edge Clean Shave Gel. This Christmas, Method Man and Red Man are going to Harvard. <laughs> for the biggest holiday party ever. You East Coast? I fought East Coast. Ho. I'm from Wisconsin. Ho. I got the munchies like a mother. Ho. Wait a minute, did you just call us hoes? Oh, no. I meant that in a good way. Oh, okay. <laughs> Method Man. Hello. Red Man. What's your name? How high? Rated R. Now playing at theaters everywhere. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA Basketball is brought to you by New Edge Clean Shaving Gel. It helps lift dirt and oil every time you shave. Back here in Norman, it's Oklahoma 54, Maryland 49. As soon as trying to knock off the number two team in the country. We talked about Juan Dixon in the first half. All-American, potentially first team All-ACC the last two years. How has Oklahoma held him 
to two points on just one of two shooting here in 13 minutes of the second well, half. I think offensively he needs more touches. I mean, one thing Maryland has done, obviously, they want to pound the ball in Lonnie Baxter, but they've been staring at Big Lon and telegraphing things. Yeah. I think if you get Juan Dixon more involved, he creates so many mismatches and so many opportunities that then the passes to Lonnie Baxter are easy. Meanwhile, we just got a glimpse uh, on the Oklahoma bench, Darian Selby pestering Kelvin Sampson to put him back into the game. <laughs> As any senior captain should do. <laughs> and now, Selby might get his wish because Ebi Ara, well, looks like Ted Hillary was going to ask him to go out of the game. Some blood apparently on his uniform, but Ara has been allowed to stay. Now, Qantas White will get a rest, so Hollis Price will have to handle the basketball. Used to that, he has played a lot of point guard in his three seasons here. Blake out of the game right now, the point guard for Maryland. Dixon, Baxter in good position, strong to the hole, and Jabari Brown has been strong when he goes up for the rebound tonight. And good job by Brown of challenging Baxter as he went for the dunk. 6'10 and long and a good shot blocker. He's had an impact on this game. Price is going to be hounded by Dixon every time he touches the ball. Well, and expect Dixon to become more active in, at the later stage of this game. All right. There. As Dixon reach it in, you're right. He all American, it. all Americans make their point on either end of the floor. They don't only have to score, and Juan Dixon does it often in the defensive end. One of those plays where he won't get credit for the steal, but he's the guy who caused the turnover. And now Wilcox back in for Holden. I said, what a pace to this game. I mean, we have a lot of guys grabbing their shorts. The intensity is high. Warm in this building. It was a warm afternoon in Norman, Oklahoma. Moves on. Dietrich the rebound. Whoops. Keep an eye on the elbows. And both of these teams, John, really going about seven deep. Oklahoma may be a little deeper than that, but generally seven guys get most of the minutes for both teams. McGee spins. Hits. How what a finish. The first time that he has used the rim to help him get through the other side. Good post up. Now he has gone. He likes to shoot the fadeaway when he turns to that shoulder. The explosion under the rim. McGee again known more for the touch on the ball than the power. He's got a dozen. Steve Blake returns for Maryland. An eight-point lead, largest of the night for the Sooners. They have had some big wins under that man in this building, beating Kansas when they were ranked number one. But this would be a nice one. Out of conference, another turnover. Quick defensively, a number of active bodies. Here inside the Lloyd Noble Center in Norman, Oklahoma, Dan Schulman, John Sunvold with you. The Sooners with an eight-point lead on number two, Maryland. Brown of the glass, but Mouton brings it down. Both teams eight and one on the season. Another early shot by Dietrich. When you've got a lead and you're at home, you've got to make that the opponent work yep. defensively. You, you've got to put some time off that clock, make a move, make them go off screens. One, two passes and a shot. It doesn't make it work. Juan is wide returns. Dietrich goes out. No lecture now. Just a pat on the back. But now solid on the defensive end. Yeah. He's been rebounding the ball. Mouton was wide open and Wilcox didn't see him. This guy will. They just can't get Baxter or Dixon any good looks. Yeah, the inability to run is taking away Steve Blake's game a little bit. Oh, good hustle. Turnovers, turnovers all night long. Juanis White, who just checked back into the game and hit the floor hard, up slowly, but back into the action now. Good position here for McGee. Remember, he's a lefty. Likes to fade away or the little jump hook. What I like about McGee right now, Dan, is he's patient on the block. Lonnie Baxter wants the basketball, trying to find it to Oklahoma Jersey. It's not a good decision by Steve Blake. McGee knocks it away. The hustle by White, but he got back up. 
Timeout taken by Maryland with 4.29 to play. Oklahoma with the lead and heading to the line. Football comes your way tomorrow night, a special Saturday night edition of Monday Night Football. It'll be the Raiders and the Titans. Oakland on top of the AFC West. Maybe try to sneak it a home field throughout the AFC playoffs prior to the game. Monday Night Countdown presented by UPS begins at 8 Eastern right here on ESPN. They're in the holiday spirit here in Norman. We were told, well, you know, we're not sure how many students went home. We're not sure if it's going to be full. It is full. It is noisy. <laughs> and they are having a good old time here tonight. Well, Boomer Sooner. Talking to Joe Castiglione today, and there is uh, Karen Sampson, Kelvin's wife, an active participant in these games. Boy, we saw their son. Kellen is his name? Yes, a he, junior in high school. He's got some range on that uh -huh. jump shot. Look like a young John Sunvold out there tonight launching threes. Speaking of which, Steve Blake of Maryland came over, point guard for Maryland, and talked about what some time as a youngster meant to him when he went to the John Sunvold yes. shooting camp in Miami. Back when years and years ago, Heat. about in 1990-91, I had a couple of shooting camps that we did, and then Steve Blake from Miami attended and said he was about nine or ten years old. And now my favorite player in the NCAA <laughs> basketball. How's that? I hate to tell you, he's two for eight tonight. You may, <laughs> we you may need to give him a two. We better go back on that <laughs> Well, the problem for Maryland really has been the turnovers. And Blake, not the culprit. He's only got two of the 19 turnovers committed by the Terps tonight. Tough catch, McGee. Almost muscled it home. Boy, McGee has been a force on the interior tonight. And you, when you watch Maryland defensively, they are reacting about a half second late. Now, they have been off for some time. They had tests. They've had finals. Yep. Coach Williams was worried about the 10-day layoff. For Oklahoma, on the other hand, this is their fourth game in seven days. But the first three were all lopsided wins against much weaker opposition. So, for them, I mean, they're in midseason form right now. Well, and a number of games to get all of their new faces going, especially Jabari Brown, who just joined them a week ago. And remember, down the stretch, they're as good a free throw shooting team as there is in the country. Ten, ten point lead, four minutes to go. Maryland's got to slowly but surely be pacing on that offensive end. Good Blake. defense by White. Blake has nothing there. Brown and Blake caught behind the play. Price gets it up. A run from the wing. here in Norman. The Sooners on a 9-0 run to take a 13-point lead. And Boomer Sooner playing in the background. Qantas White has done a nice job second half staying in front of Steve Blake. And on the other end, Hollis's price speed. He gets it to the paint. He draws the defense. And Ebi Ara loves to shoot it, loves to score, and is not bashful to take the big shot. The last time Oklahoma defeated a top five team in this building was back in 1996 when they got Kansas. The Jayhawks then were ranked number three. The Terps are number two right now, and they're in trouble. And I think you make a good point about Kansas when they're number one. It's still a conference game. This is the number two team nationally, not in your conference. Highly picked. Everyone thinks that they are maybe the best team. If or at least one of the best. Wilcox, tough move. The challenge in the papers was could Oklahoma match up physically with this ball club? Aaron McGee, Darian Selby have said, yes, we can. Well, considering the rebounds are 36-30, make it 37-30 in favor of Oklahoma, they have matched up. And this guy has been as big a piece of the puzzle as anybody, Aaron McGee. Wilcox will draw the foul, could not finish the play. Well, Wilcox really got out and ran the floor. Blake, another pass on the money. 
and the Wilcox. The hustle by McGee. Now there's the push, but you know what? Aaron McGee missed a shot on one end, dug deep, and got to the other end, but that's his fourth person. Four on McGee, four on Selby, who's still on the bench. At the line, Wilcox. You know, John, for Maryland, that is just their 16th point in the second half. Wow. Go figure Wilcox knocking him down. Came into the game 11 for 34 from the line. That does wonders for your percent. When you're at 32, you go three for three. That number jumps right. up tomorrow. Good stroke. Oklahoma ball. 315 left. 12 point lead for the Sooners. Trying to knock off number two. Pepto-Bismol. It's first aid for heartburn, diarrhea, nausea, indigestion, and upset stomachs. It's the free battery deal at Radio Shack. Buy select Intercell Alkaline batteries now and get the same amount free in January 2002. Whether you buy three packs or three dozen, you'll get the same amount of identical batteries free in January 2002 at Radio Shack. Hurry, offer ends Christmas Eve. It's going out. Today, seems like everybody's getting back to nature. Nice to know some of us never left. Smooth and refreshing as a mountain stream. Head for the mountains of Bush. within 315 of what I think most people would have to consider an upset considering Maryland uh, being ranked number two in some of the wins they've already had. Coming up here tonight on a Sports Center on ESPN, John Anderson and Steve Levy will look at Michael Jordan's Wizards, the hottest team in the NBA. Chris Berman updates you on some injury news of the NFL and Dick Schaap, remember, Schaap passing away today at the age of 67. And again, our sympathies go out to the Schaap family, especially our colleague, his youngest son, Jeremy. You know, Maryland, out of the timeout, turns up the full court pressure. And here's what we talked about. Kelvin Sampson under him. The Sooners have two wins over top five teams in this building, both of them against Kansas. They obviously don't get the opportunity to play as many top five teams out of conference here in this building, but this one would be a biggie for this program. White, nice step through. Boy, how did he split those guys? Yeah, and the key now for Oklahoma, spread the floor, run your offense, get good shots. And when it comes to crunch time, knock down your free throws like you've been doing all season. Well, you've got to make the open ones. Yeah. This Maryland team can make you pay in a hurry. Blake all alone, so he puts up a three. Well, Baxter had his hands on it. Good and quite Corral. And Blake commits the foul. Now, the Maryland Terrapins, right now number two, matching the highest ranking they've ever had. They've never been number one, and they obviously would have needed to continue on and have Duke lose eventually for them to become number one for the first time in their history. But the loss here would drop them down. The rankings aren't the most important thing, but you get a look. Well, and what's interesting, I think you can take all those teams. Uh, Duke's established themselves, obviously, but right. you can take the rest, uh, shake them up in a basket, and roll them out. Uh, you really can. You're exactly right. Just looking ahead to tomorrow night, Illinois, oh, what a number game, seven, and Missouri, number nine. And those are both teams that just a week or so ago were both up in the top three or four. And, and both teams needing to play better than they have. Yeah. Illinois has not been as good as they want to be. Missouri coming off a outside of loss to Iowa. Good hustle by the Sooner team. Yeah. Selby. 
You know what started all that, or a raw rather, what started all that was Aaron McGee keeping it inbounds, and he's made a boatload of hustle plays tonight. And here's where Kelvin Sampson's team will develop. Evie Iraq, yeah, he did get fouled. Here's the save. Watch this. Again, the hustle points tonight have gone to the seniors. Once Iraq got that basketball, he could have easily backed it out. And they could have Again, taking some time off. But what you do, you got a, a break. They call a foul. You go knock your free throws in. Next month, you think he will? He and Dietrich yeah, a little yeah, better. Yeah, you have to understand and, it. Yep. You get to conference play. Any big ball game, you got to understand time and possession. How important the value of that basketball is the last five minutes of the game. Knocks down the free throws, and Maryland's in big trouble. Boy, Price has been all over Dixon. And a bump by a rod. Didn't mean to, but he stopped the clock. Both teams over the limit here with 2.21 to play. Now you mentioned it already, 16 second half points. Yeah, the numbers we spoke of, fifth in the country in free throw shooting. So you got, you have to like his, the team's, his team's odds, huh? Maryland, on the other hand, is a team just 63% on the season, although better lately. And if you get the right guys there, Nicholas, Dixon, right, they'll knock them down. Some of the big guys have really had problems. Here comes the pressure. Timeout called by McGee. Most of the shoot around this afternoon for Oklahoma was working against Maryland's pressure. So we will see if they can handle the things that Maryland's going to come at. They're going to come full guns now, trapping the ball, shooting the passing lane. Sooners try to avenge a defeat at Cole Fieldhouse last year, 68-60. That game, Oklahoma scored only two points in the first nine minutes. Juan Dixon scored 23 in the second half to lead Maryland to a win last year. But this year, a very well-balanced effort by the Oklahoma Sooners. Hollis Price has only six points tonight, yet Oklahoma is ahead by 12. A little bit of a wake-up call maybe for the rest of the Big 12. Everyone assumed, yeah, this Sooner team's going to be good. We don't know how good the new players are, but we're getting an idea right now. Yep. Ebi Ara, newcomer, Jabari Brown. And Jabari Brown, yep. only a week with his ball club. What a difference he makes on that defensive end. <laughs> McGee, good poise, oh, good boy. pass. That's how you handle it. Good step through by McGee. Strong enough not to lose the ball. Abby Ara with the high octane finish. Nicholas for three. Baxter battling McGee. What a fight. Yeah. Boy, I'll tell you what, outstanding, outstanding hustle. I don't know if Oklahoma gives out an effort or hustle award after the game, but you got to give it to that guy, Aaron McGee. Yeah, take a look against the pressure. McGee strong enough. The slaps, the slaps. Dixon quick with his hands to step through. And now it's just numbers. Good recognition by Brown. Easy finish. Arras, Sooners have played a good one tonight. Aras salivating at the other end, being on the receiving end of that. And here's Quanis White to the free throw line. A soft touch. Well, they track the hustle stats right here in the building. Look at Oklahoma leading in rebounds, leading in steals. They've gotten it done. You know, White has only been to the line now 10 times this season. Nicholas gets a look. It'll be Maryland ball. You know, Dan, how quickly Jabari Brown and how high he gets to that rebound. I think Baxter thought he had another one. You know, simply Brown goes over the top. That's his 13th rebound tonight. Maryland has committed 20 turnovers in this game. Dixon, desperation three. Good block back there. Frustration now. And look at the Sooners getting down the floor. The Terps came in here on an eight-game winning streak. 
They haven't handled the ball well, and they haven't shot the ball well. Yeah, you take a look at the season numbers, and Maryland understands a Final Four team that uh, they are going to get everyone's best shot. They know that in the ACC, but they understand it too outside of conference play. And the partner, you thought this was only a football school, huh? <laughs> How about the predictable cheer of overrated greets the Terps right now. There will be a whole lot of success for this Maryland team this season. Don't worry about them. But what a statement Oklahoma has made here tonight. As you said, don't think that Kansas and Missouri and Oklahoma State and Texas and all of their fans aren't watching this game saying, wow, these guys are pretty good. Wilcox with a slam, timeout with a minute 18 to go. Oklahoma on their way to their biggest win of the season on the verge of knocking out number two Maryland. It's tough to see things clearly these days. The situation in the world, our economy, your investments. But investing is the job at Janus, and Janus is working to spot opportunities, using the approach that's worked long term, applying lessons from the recent past, investing in companies that show signs they can perform in this economy and into the next. Get there. Janus. Here in Norman, just a minute 18 to go. Oklahoma, which led by two at the half and actually trailed for much of the first half, now with a 14-point lead. Maryland has been held to 20 points here in the second half. They are now out of timeouts. Double bonus the rest of the way for a good free-throw shooting team in the Sooners. It, it's all but over. A 14-point lead for Oklahoma, a team you said before the game started you know, they're kind of flying below the radar right now, but that's no longer possible. I didn't know. They've Not made a statement tonight. Yeah. And Maryland's going to be flying after the passing lanes right now. They're going to be shooting, trying to make steals. They're going to be fouling. We'll see how Oklahoma handles the pressure once again. Want to keep the floor spread? Body movement, ball movement. And a quick foul. Ryan, an 87 percent free throw shooter. Doesn't look like a guy who's 14 points up on the number two team in the country. That's a big statement game for his ball club. For him, one of the top coaches nationally. You know, last year they fell in the first round of the NCAA tournament to Indiana State. They were a number four seed. They won the Big 12 championship, the tournament championship, and. and I've always thought if you have to play Friday, Saturday, Sunday in tough battles and tough wars, that doesn't help you when you've got to go play on Thursday in that tournament. I think that's tough. And that's ultimately where the success of, of the Oklahoma season will be decided. They've made the tournament all seven years under Samson, but only once have they survived the first weekend of the NCAA tournament to get to the Sweet 16. He taps it. Now here comes Mouton. Another opportunity to just pull it out and get the game over. Blake for three. Wow, he can get out. Wilcox just has a spike. Yeah. You know, that, that's that right. Just, uh, that kind of size and athleticism, he'll have the pro scouts drooling pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Don't forget John Anderson, Steve Levy, Sports Center next year on ESPN. And for more coverage on this game, after it's over, switch it over to ESPN News. Back to the line, go to Sooners. Still coaching, huh? Even the guys who haven't played tonight. Well, see, yeah, and it's still teaching for that, that man because, again, of the new faces. There are a lot of situations down the stretch of a game that you have to handle the right way. Now, they are fortunate that it's a 14-point lead. They've missed some free throws. They've maybe had some ill-advised shots. And coaches continue to coach and are not satisfied even sometimes after the buzzer. One and two for White. White has played 34 minutes tonight. Ara and Price have played 35. Uh, one of the things we wanted to watch to see if White would be bothered by any pressure from Maryland. Only two turnovers has handled it. 
has set up his teammates. He has six assists. And Gary Williams coaching for tomorrow as well, still making changes as if there were, this were a much closer game. Kind of a very veteran ball club, this Terrapin team. Understand it's still December. The loss means something tonight, but uh, not a lot down the road. All smiles for Mrs. Sampson. Karen looking on and in appreciation of what her husband's team has done here tonight. Well, we weren't quite sure what to expect. We thought we'd get a great game, but Maryland's size and experience, and this is a real veteran bunch of Terrapins, just about everybody back from last year. Whereas Oklahoma is smaller and still getting to know one another. Jabari Brown comes out. Huge you, ovation for him. And you would have loved to have been in that huddle that first time out after Maryland got to the quick start, pushing them off the floor. Oklahoma looked a little bit not intimidated, but they weren't getting back defensively. Their offense was kind of a one pass and one shot. Kelvin Sampson calls timeout. Things changed in a hurry. Right out of that timeout, alley -oop for Brown, and then the hard foul by Selby. And Oklahoma not staring at the rest of the way. What a statement by the Sooners. Huge second half for the Oklahoma Sooners, turning a two-point lead into a 16-point win, knocking off the number two team in the country. The final score, Oklahoma 72, Maryland 56, here in Norman. Sports Center is coming up next with John Anderson and Steve Levy. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For John Sonneville, I'm Dan Schulman, and thanks for watching. Good night from Norman. impact in Washington the last time this franchise won eight straight games MJ wore Tar Heel blue does this kid still have a leg up on this young kid in Indiana on the ice Yarmir Yager returns to Pittsburgh with one last tooth how will the Penguins faithful treat him I don't expect much uh... neither of Ranger and Islander fans the past few years both teams fight for first at the Garden Chris Berman with advice for those trying to stop the Steelers anyone planning to beat them had better wear this and strap it on real tight because the Steelers mean business. The Eagles defense has been all business, allowing just 38 points on the road in six games.